Here I am again. I'm going to tell you a story about there was two guys, very powerful guys. They took part in the Castellano hit as well. Neither one of them were made guys. One guy's name was Joe Watts. His father was German, uh, so he couldn't become a made guy. He was a very distinguished uh, hit guy, for sure. And they called him Joey the German. And uh, another guy named Frankie Butts. And they were close, and when they did things, they did things together. Now, Joey the German, Joe Watts, had a, an attitude towards everything and everybody, like he's Mr. Big Shot, he had a lot of money, and uh, he had this ego, and they, we put a guy around him. This guy, Fat Dom, was a made guy. So when they would have to go to a meeting, Fat Dom would go to the, with them so they were represented by a, a made guy. Every once in a while, they'd go on meetings by themselves, and Joe Watts would go in and put Frankie Botts on the side. Frankie Botts resented it. He didn't like it. We're both not made guys. We both do work. We both do everything together. Who the fuck are you to just take the lead? He wasn't too crazy about it. They argued a little bit. And uh, eventually he came to me, Frankie Botts, and said, uh, I would like to be with you and under you. This is after we took over. It was after the Castellano hit. So I says, I'll talk to John about it. Because you've been here since Frankie the Chico, and now that Frankie's gone, John has got you with uh, Fat Dom. So I, I'll, I'll talk to John about it. It was around the 4th of July. Now, John was throwing these big bashes for the 4th of July, and my guys said, me, why don't we do a little something for the 4th of July? So I said, all right, we'll do it in Staten Island at my house. We'll have a 4th of July party. We'll invite people, and uh, we'll have a barbecue, and we'll get a truck with free ice cream, and around the corner we can shut the block. We could have this thing where the kids jump in and they just bounce around. There's no traffic. It's safe. I had a pool in the backyard, and people can go swimming, and we'll shoot off some fireworks and stuff. That's all my crew out of here when they started putting everything together. I also invited Frankie Butts to come over my 4th of July party. I wanted to keep it not like John did, nice and low key, family. We were on the front porch, the back porch, the pool. Everybody could come in and out of the house. It's like an open house and we just have a good time. Well, one thing led to another, and people heard about this block party. And that night, people were coming in herds. Five people from here, 10 people from around the corner, 15 people from someplace else. And result, 1,500 people came to this block party. My house was in shambles. People were going in, it was like a tour. Going in and looking at the bedrooms, looking at the house, I said, whoa, whoa, slow this down, bro. This ain't a tour of my house. They say, I'm not selling this. It's not a real estate thing. This is a 4th of July party. Family and friends in the house. So I had to get a guy like a bodyguard to stand by the door and make sure that people didn't come and go. At one point, I hear my daughter, Da, what? He won't let me in the house. The guy didn't even know my daughter. He wouldn't let her in the house. I said, no, no, let her in. She's my daughter. It was crazy. The news media came down and started taking pictures. I'm low-key. I'm dead against this bullshit. Now there's news media taking pictures. Police cars came. At one time, while they were shooting off some fireworks, I was right near the highway. The, tree, the road going into the highway... There were some trees and stuff. They caught on fire. The fire department is there now. It was a madhouse. I said, look what the fuck we did here. Look, look what I did here. I said, never again. 
I'll never do this again. I'm not a John Gotti. I didn't want this kind of attention. I'm, I want to be low key. I want to be left alone. But uh, the party was completely outrageous. It was in the newspapers the next day. Salvatore sent me to Bull Gravano, invites 2,000, 10,000 people. They exaggerated it to no point. It was about 1,500 people. Frankie Botts never showed up. And I said, I hope he didn't get arrested or something because he wanted to be there. And I wanted him to be there. I wanted him to get some good news from me that he was going to get transferred over to me, under me. And I knew he would be happy with that. Sure enough, the next day, the next afternoon, Joe Watts comes around. Did you hear what happened? About what? They found Frankie Botts in his apartment dead. Really? Yeah. Would they shoot him? No. They stabbed him. Police reports and stuff said that he was stabbed 50 times. He had an enormous fight inside the apartment. He must have let somebody in or whatever. They fought whoever it was, one or two guys, and they were stabbing him. He got 50 knife wounds. And then Joe Watts caught my attention by saying, I told him not to live over there. It's a tough neighborhood. There's all kinds of crime going on there. He should have never lived in that neighborhood. I'm telling you, that's probably what it is. Like he was trying to convince me that he had nothing to do with it. And uh, he was living in a crime area. That's the way I took it. I started to feel he was leaving you, and you knew it. Maybe he's argued, you fought, and you killed him. I didn't say it to him, but that's what I felt. The more I thought about it, the more I paid attention to him. He was jittery, jumping up and down, talking fast, and at times I had to tell him, Joe, calm down, bro. Calm down. Shit happens. I want you to tell me the story slow. Say it again. He almost put his head down, almost like he was crying, put his hand, his hand over his head. I can't talk about it, Sammy. You can't talk about it. Here's a guy who must have killed at least 25, 30 guys himself. This is a hardcore guy. We're pretty used to death and things. And we have feelings, but it's like a traffic cop. He becomes a traffic cop on a highway and he sees a couple of people in a car accident dead. He's in shock. Goes home, he tells his wife he can't even sleep. Two, three accidents later, another accident, people are splattered all over the place. He's real calm, picking things up. You get used to it. He was too thrown back for my taste. I never found out who did what. I don't know, no one did, actually. When I saw John, A couple of days later, at Frankie's, Frankie Botts' funeral, he started laughing a little bit. You talk about me throwing a big party. You threw a couple of big parties uh, yourself. I mean, this Fourth of July party was in the newspapers and everything, bro. I said, he's jealous. He got mad as a bastard at me. Say, hey, Sammy, this ain't no fucking joke. What do you mean that I get jealous? Calm down, bro. I'm breaking your balls. What are you getting excited about? 
you know, when I saw John, he's teasing me, he's laughing at Frankie's funeral. And uh, he didn't seem to be disturbed. These are guys who came on a major hit with us. We were friends and tight for years. Didn't seem to bother him either. I seen him and Joe Watts huddling up not too far from the coffin. I just got a real vibe that I think he got permission, Joe Watts, from John to take Frankie out. The moral of the story is, in the mafia, there could be treachery that's hard to understand or hard to even believe. Here's a guy who wanted to get transferred over. Maybe he goes to John. God knows what he tells John. John may have told him, do what you got to do. But he gave me permission to bring him over at the same time. Now that's treachery at the highest level. He never said to me that he had anything to do with it. But my thoughts then started to drift in that area. And they're in that area right now. I'm not saying it's, it's exactly what happened, but the life was dangerous. Watch your back. Treachery is in all forms of life. You want to succeed, there's somebody looking to stab you in the back and take you down. Jealousy, envy, they're dangerous factors. Be careful, my friends. Well, that's the story of my 4th of July party. Again, I want to tell you that I'm working on the podcast. It's going to come out soon. If you like this video, press like. If you want to see this podcast, subscribe. Thanks, my friends. See you later.